just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. So you two team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to Team Keep It Clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon if you would like to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids uh, but either way whether you want to or not whether you do or not it's all good man i appreciate y'all i love y'all on today's episode we got a very very special guest let me let him introduce himself team keep it clean on this episode of nfl questions from subs i'm joined by harrington from flock block uh and how just to jump straight into it how did you get started uh doing youtube and what made you want to do youtube well for me uh what inspired me was just my love for for the ravens um you know i have a lot of friends and we talk football a lot and you know they kind of joke with me and tell me hey you know you talk to us about the ravens way too much and you know they got tired of hearing me rant about the ravens all the time so you know they just suggested that I started a YouTube channel and also watching other YouTubers like like you and uh, TTB and other really good YouTubers, um, you know, have YouTube channels. I thought, you know, why not give it a try? So I just always like voicing my opinions about the Ravens and, and, and giving my insight as far as what I know. So, you know, it's just, just something that's been a hobby of mine and I've really enjoyed it so far. All right, cool. And what's been your favorite part about it? Um, my favorite part about it is just, you know, interacting with the fans and, you know, just seeing what, what the fans are into, um, from, you know, what's going on now and also what happened in the past as far as, you know, the Ravens, you know, past Ravens games, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know, all the good parts and all the bad parts. And I think that one of the things I really enjoy is that just being around people that think like me as far as, you know, uh, a fan experience. And a lot of times when you are a fan of a team and you're around, other people that might not like the same team as you. It's like mm -hmm. you're in your own world. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's like I really enjoy being around other people um, and talking to them and, 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 you know, seeing that they think just like me as far as how highly we view our team. All right. Cool, man. And where can everybody find you at as far as Twitter, Instagram, YouTube? Let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah. So right now um, I'm on Twitter. Um, so you can, it's just at the flock block on Twitter and um, you guys can always DM me or email me uh, questions as well. Anytime you guys want to find out um, information about the channel and also to ask questions on the channel and um, you know, we'll, we'll go through it on each and every episode. Uh, so right now, uh, just mostly on Twitter, just trying to stay interactive on YouTube and Twitter for the mm -hmm. most part. Okay. All right. And I'll leave links to all of that stuff down below in the description. So without further ado, we got some good questions like we always do. So let's do it. First question came from my boy, Will. He said, we're back, baby. So I was high on the Ravens taking a safety early in the draft. They didn't. They love what they got in Elliott and Clark. I really hope I'm wrong about Elliott and Clark and that they both show out this year. And one of them, if not both, can get to that Pro Bowl level or all pro level. A man can dream. But, man, can we get a few interceptions from the safety position this year? <laughs> uh, Geno Stone, he had more interceptions in one preseason game. Uh, you probably talked about this on another video, but it would not be surprised me at all uh, if Brandon Stevens is getting starter reps this year and is a starter next year. He's not the project people are saying he is. And I got a hot take. Stevens starts splitting reps with Elliott. Oh, I would say Clark, but Clark is calling the plays with the dot. Uh, must I remind you of that play against the Steelers when Clark was in great position? Uh, clearly, I care way too much about the safety position when the problem is and has been forever the wide receiver position. Get healthy, Bateman in Hollywood, and hashtag Team Keep It Clean. All love to you uh, and your fam. I appreciate it, Will. So, um, man, the safeties, Deshaun Elliott, Chuck Clark, and he said he wouldn't even be surprised if Brandon Steven gets uh, starting reps this year. Um, just to get into it, I wouldn't be surprised either, but I, I think they would put him in on some packages. I don't think he's going to take away reps from Deshaun Elliott. I, I don't think he's going to take yeah, away yeah. from uh, Chuck Clark. I think that they would have him in some form, some fashion on the field, just like they did in the preseason game. But this time it would be more with uh, with with other starters out there on defense, too. What about you? How you feel about the safeties going into this year? Well, yeah, I think the safeties going into this year, uh, we're in a good position. Um, 
when I when they drafted uh, Brandon Stevens at SMU, I did anticipate that being part of the plan. Uh, maybe not right now, but at some point in the future or later on, you know, in the next few seasons because of his speed and his athleticism, what he can do. Um, so, you know, when we talk about long term plans for Chuck Clark and Deshaun Elliott, they're very, both very good safeties. Um, and we do like to see him. We want to see him get turnovers as well. And, you know, uh, us Ravens fans, we've been used to seeing Ed Reed in the past. And sometimes even Eric White will get their fair share of interceptions. So to not see it from the safety position is kind of weird, but hopefully we can work towards that. But um, some of these younger guys, um, you know, um, like uh, Brandon Steve, Brandon Stevens, uh, we, we can get him in there and rotate in safety and get some snaps in there. Obviously not too many snaps, but, you know, I think that that's definitely a possibility you have to explore, especially when, you know, Deshaun Elliott, Chuck Clark, um, when we start looking at when these other guys get paid, you know, what's that honestly might be one of the biggest decisions is what safeties are we going to be able to keep? You know, will we keep, will we keep Deshaun Elliott? What's going to be a long-term plan for Chuck Clark? Can we work something out and try to fit some of these younger guys into the safety rotation? So I really think that this is a um, it's a really, really good question because, you know, we want to see what's you know what the young guys have to offer. And like I said, Geno Stone, this is a guy that really came in last year, got drafted out of Iowa. Um mm-hmm caught off the team and then get rocket got back onto the team. He's really making a name for himself. So hopefully he can, you know, show, you know, how useful he can be as the preseason and the regular season approaches. Right. And you made a real good point about the um about the pay. Because Chuck Clark is he's on his second contract right now, but Deshaun Elliott, he's on the last year of his deal. Right. Uh, so this could be well, I mean it is a make or break season for Deshaun Elliott as far as cashing in. Whether he prices himself out uh, of the Ravens, um, whatever they will want to give him, if they want to give him something, or uh, if he plays reasonably this year and they can still keep his contract, uh, not to a minimum or whatnot, but it isn't some crazy, crazy deal. Yeah, um, respectable deal. Mm-hmm. And also with uh, Chuck Clark, uh, with what Will mentioned about him having a green dot, I really do think that this is going to be Chuck Clark's last season with the green dot. Not because he does a bad job at it, because he obviously doesn't, but I think they're going to want to transition that green dot to Patrick Queen. Mm -hmm. And I think they, not that they would have done it last year, I think maybe even possibly this year they may have done it if last year was a regular year. But of course, last year with the pandemic and everything, the rookies didn't have a regular offseason. So that kind of slowed up the progress of all of the rookies and really the entire team. Um, but I think that Chuck Clark's days with the green dot, they're numbered. And again, not in a bad way against Chuck Clark, but more so uh, a positive for Patrick Queen. Yeah, and that makes sense because, you know, last year we didn't have a lot of training camp and a lot of the mm-hmm. typical practices that we did um, this year and in any other normal year. We didn't have that last year for the rookies, and we didn't really get to see them take that developmental step. Um, Chuck Clark, his football acumen, his football IQ, obviously really good, but, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Patrick Queen did get that green dot because in the 2019 season, we didn't really have a, you know, a strong, strong linebacker and a young linebacker like he is that was able to patrol the field like that um, since, you know, we had C.J. Mosley. Obviously, Mosley priced himself out of Baltimore. Mm-hmm. So if we can get somebody in the middle of that defense to wear the green dot and kind of patrol the rest of the defense, that'd be good. So hopefully Patrick Queen can be that guy. Next question came from my guy, Dylan J. He said, hey, Gravy, my name's Dylan, and I'm a first-time uh, question asker. Love the videos, though. Appreciate it. Uh, anyways, haven't heard a ton on the Ben Mason front. This idea could have been tossed around before, but what do you think about Ben Mason assuming the fullback role 100% in order to give Ricard more snaps at defensive tackle and defensive end? I don't think Ben Mason is safe on the practice squad. I'll let you start with this one. So how how you feel about Ben Mason? What you think he's gonna do if if that's a viable option? Having him as a fullback, one thousand percent of the time, and Ricard taking snaps on defense. Oh well, I know John Harbaugh loves his Michigan guys, so um, he's gonna try to get Ben Mason in there. Um, uh, for me, I think kind of go with the same routine. Try to get him to do so many different things on this team, special teams. Uh, have him get some rotations on defense if you can, and then you know try to fit him in a position where he can you know be of use. If it's tight end, it may be tight end. If it's fullback, it's fullback. Um, I feel like right now he's the type of player that, in my opinion, can be playing positionless football. And what I mean by that is is that he can you know with his athleticism and his you know his toughness. We always hear about how tough he is, how scrappy he is, and how rough and physical he is. 
you know, if he can come in there and play positionless football and just, you know, provide a service to whatever um, Greg Roman needs him or Don Martindale or, 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 or John Harbaugh needs him, uh, no matter where he is on the team, if he can just be uh, useful on the team uh, and not have a set position, you know, we might figure out what is the right fit for him because we didn't know what the right fit for Patrick Ricard was going to be early in his career. But now we see he's an outstanding fullback, one of the best fullbacks we have, maybe the best fullback we have in the NFL with him and, you know, Kyle Juszczyk in San Francisco. So I think, um, you know, right now, just try to see what he can provide to the team. You know, he, he seems like a very good football player. I have to go back and look at some of the other things he does well from his Michigan State, but he's a very, very good football player. And, you know, he puts a lot of effort and, and, and you know, he – um very physical. So that's one thing I like about Ben Mason is that he seems like he does feel like a Raven. Mm -hmm. And that's important that he does that. But I don't think he's going to be playing like a Raven this year. I think that he is actually going to be uh, a stashed player. Uh, I think that they're going to end up putting him on injury reserve. I don't think they would put him on a practice squad, but I think they'll put him on injury reserve so they can hold him down uh, until next year. Because next year, uh, we are we find ourselves back in this position again, back in this situation again, to where our fullback, who we love, who we appreciate, um, is in the final year of his contract. contract. Patrick Ricard, his deal is coming up. Remember last time this happened with Juice? We love Juice. Love Kyle Juszczyk. Oh, yeah. I love Kyle Juszczyk. Yeah, man. But then Ravens were like, hey, thank you, but we, we're going to go in a different direction. Right. And – one thing that I think about, especially uh, with the additions of Sammy Watkins and them double dipping uh, with Rashad Bateman and Tylen Wallace, um, they the Ravens seem to be going to more of a passing offense. Not that they're going to get rid of the run, because I don't expect them to get rid of the run at all. Uh, uh -huh. But they seem to really be taking a turn to be doing a lot more passing. Um, and while Ricard, he does have... Um, he has reliable hands. Uh, he doesn't get many passes thrown his way, but when the when passes are thrown his way, he catches the ball. Uh, great blocker, very physical, and yeah, he can play on defense as well. I uh, almost think that Ravens, with the Ben Mason pick, it was a move uh, for the future uh, to where they have a guy in place who they feel could be their next fullback, uh, and he would be a lot cheaper uh, than Patrick Ricard uh, because – this would, if they, whatever Patrick Ricard gets next from whoever it is, it'll be his third contract. So a rookie, what was Ben Mason? A, a, was he a fifth round? Or a, I forgot what round he got picked in. I think he was in the fifth round. Yeah, I, I think, I think it was. But yeah, I don't, I don't remember either. But um, regardless, whatever round he was picked in, I know it was fifth or lower, but his contract is a lot cheaper uh, than what Patrick Ricard's third contract would be. And then on top of that, I anticipate that even this year, Patrick Ricard not necessarily will be phased out of the offense, but he'll be used uh, less than he was and than he has been uh, over the past two years, especially with them transitioning uh, to doing a lot more passing. Yeah, yeah. And, and this just all goes down to football and how to build you know, the best team uh, for the long run. Um, obviously, when you know we head to these contracts with Lamar and, and, and Mark Andrews and some of these other guys, and we start to build the rest of our team and pour money into different assets. Um, some players are going to outprice, you know, and, and move on to other teams. And Eric DeCosta, you know, seems like the GM that doesn't want to overpay for certain positions that he feels like may be expendable. And the, but the bottom line in the NFL, you know, look at the fullback position. It's a really ex it's even more expendable than the running back position. So uh, we saw what happened with the running backs with Mark Ingram. He had a great year in 2019, and boom, just like that. 2020 now he's on the now on the team um and you know we're you know we're trying to get younger at running back and also trying to get younger at fullback so we can make sure to you know have enough money to put it in places where we need it in the long run so i do like that perspective um so um you know uh uh as far as ben mason trying to be stashed away for this year and then have him be used as an asset at fullback uh for seasons to come so let's see. And, and um, and you brought up a really good point that I, I didn't even think of and wasn't even thinking about. But, yeah, it makes even more sense why it may be a little bit harder to retain uh, a Patrick Ricard, especially going into what will be his third contract. And, and that would be uh, the fact that you are getting ready to pay Lamar Jackson. You are getting ready to pay 
uh, Mark Andrews, right. um, Ronnie Stanley, and Marlon Humphrey. Their money's gonna keep kicking up. Uh, so, and you you got some other deals to to dish out. So when you look at all the deals that you're you're paying already and the deals that you're gonna have to pay, then that's when you look to see, mm, is this investment really worth it? Are we really getting ready to pay a fullback? uh on his third contract are we really getting ready to pay him that money when we got this guy that we drafted who can play fullback as well so appreciate right. you bringing them points up about the contracts coming up oh definitely next question came from my boy wyatt p he said i ain't graven my name is wyatt uh and i'm a huge fan of your youtube channel and consider consider you to be the best ravens youtube i don't know about all that part but i, I appreciate it man he said, I know you probably get a ton of questions and may value uh, Patreons more, but I really want to know your thoughts on this. After watching the preseason, it is evident that we really need a true backup quarterback. Huntley is good, but will not get us to the playoffs. I was looking at QB free agency next year and saw Jacoby Brissett and Marcus Mariota are available. How would you feel about bringing in one of those guys or possibly someone else? Well, um, when you... Well, at least for me, in my opinion, when you think about a backup quarterback and in our situation, Lamar Jackson is obviously the starter. That's the guy. Yeah. When you think of a backup quarterback and you think about the offense that the Ravens run uh, in your backup quarterback, you want somebody that can run that same type of offense and you want it to be a minimal drop off. Uh, when that backup quarterback comes in, obviously you don't want the backup quarterback in unless it's a blowout game, but you want there to be a minimal drop off if he has to come in. And when you think about Tyler Huntley versus Jacoby Brissett versus Marcus Mariota, who would fit that offense the best? My opinion would be Tyler Huntley uh, because he has the arm. And yeah, he's young, super young. Last year, he was an undrafted rookie free agent. So this is his second year in the NFL. Those guys obviously have experience over him, uh, but he's in the perfect system for him because he is like, from the hair to both being from down here in Florida <laughs> to just the even the way that like his charisma on the field it's just so many similarities with him and Lamar Jackson it's crazy when you watch it like if he were to put on a number eight jersey really? yeah you'll probably think it's Lamar Lamar yeah. Jackson yeah <laughs> they, they do um their release is a little bit different now when they throw the ball and, and Lamar's obviously faster than Tyler Huntley uh, and got a little more twitch to him but still Tyler Huntley is the closest thing uh, to Lamar and, and definitely closer than a Marcus Mariota and a uh, Jacoby Brissett. So I um I I honestly think like again I, hopefully we don't have to get to that, but I think Tyler Huntley would do fine if if we had to roll with him for a certain amount of time. Is he Lamar? No, he's not Lamar. But can we expect him to be Lamar? No. But are these other guys Lamar, Jacoby Brissett, and Marcus Mariota? No. Like, and, and, and I know you said that um, Huntley is good, but he will not get us to the playoffs. When you look at these guys, when they were starters, they didn't get their team to the playoffs. If you look at Jacoby Brissett, what he did with the Colts, he got kicked out of the Colts for a reason. And then you look at Marcus Mariota, he still was a number two ov overall yeah, pick yeah. for the Titans. And look where he's at now, fighting for a backup spot with, I think, the Raiders. So, no, I, I would roll, roll with Huntley for this one. What about you? Yeah, I'm not particularly a big fan of, of going to free agency to get a back, uh, backup quarterback. I just like what we have. Uh, Trace McSorley, when I went to the game on Saturday, he didn't look all that impressive, um, you know, in his uh, in his snaps. I did like what I see. I like what I saw from um, from Tyler Huntley. Like you said, he looks like an exact, you know, he looks like Lamar Jackson from the hair, you know, from the mannerism, from everything he's doing. Um, I think, I don't know, he'd be around like a 4 4 4 5 40. Uh, coming out of Utah, um, you know, he's very fast. Uh, obviously not the thrower Lamar Jackson is, but, you know, if he can just become more comfortable throwing the ball, this is my, we might have a really good backup quarterback in our hands. And uh, I think that he's a really good guy that we can have that knows the offense, knows the system, and just has that continuity and relationship with the rest of the players on the team. Um, so, you know, we just need him to continue to learn, grow, and build. And he's got the speed. And, if we're ever in games, and hopefully, like you said, we don't get in that position. Right. If we're ever in games where, um, you know, we need to come in and run the offense, we can do something primarily run-based. And that would definitely be beneficial to us because he knows he knows the system. And, you know, I don't think Marcus Mariota would be a good fit because he doesn't really have the speed. And also, what is he like as a thrower? 
Um, and like I said, also with Jacoby Brissett, we know he doesn't have the speed. And, um, you know, he, he might be a little bit better of a thrower than Mariota and maybe even Huntley. But like I said, I'd rather have somebody that knows our team, knows our system, knows our players, and understands, you know, um, what it means to win for this team. So I, I want to stick with Huntley. And, and, you know, Chase McSorley, he may not be able to prove himself for the rest of the preseason, but, you know, you can always use a, uh, a quarterback three just for depth purposes. Shout out to Graven.